Man, I, I really don't want that track to end, honestly, but it is so... Ah, so good, and we need to get on with this. Got some toasters to frack. So let's just do that, shall we? Hey, 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 here we are. Make sure to put some ducking on this one, because holy hell has it got a soundtrack. Mm. Yes, Battlestar Galactica Deadlock Slytherin Games brought you this one. It seems to be uh, co-developed with Black Lab Games, and it would not in any way surprise me if Black Lab Games may have been responsible for Starhammer. I'm going to double check on that one. Unfortunately, when I go outside the window... The damn music goes off, which I really, really wish it had an option for that not to happen. But there isn't. So I apologize in advance when I click out of the window that the music disappears. Was I right about Black Lab Games? Yes, I was. It was Starhammer. Yep. Thought so. Uh, Starhammer has a very similar style to this in the way that it plays. It's essentially... You, it's a turn-based game, but a turn equals about like five or six seconds of real-time action. So you plan the turn out a bit like, well, a bit like uh, Frozen Synapse, actually. And you execute the turn, and then the turn happens. And it consists of about five to six seconds of real-time action. And then the game stops, and you plan again and plan again. So it's that's how it works. And it does result in a very, it's a very effective method for slow fleet combat tactics, which is what we're looking at here with Battlestar. And there is a economic and strategy layer on top of that. I've played the first couple of tutorial missions, so we're a little bit into the campaign. Well, more specifically, two missions in, uh, so I can show you exactly what's going on with this. Admiral, Commander, we have a problem. The Idris relay that we use to outsource our jump calculations is malfunctioning. Malfunctioning. What's our effective jump distance? It's difficult to estimate with just the onboard computers. The red line extends beyond Helios Alpha, but we'd probably need an intermediary jump to get anywhere significant outside of the system. This is what an ambush looks like, Commander. Find us a way back to Helios Gamma immediately. I want Daedalus under the cover of Ragnar's clouds before the Cylons can attack. Commander, we're going to need more ships. Sinan's taken up yards one and two for the Jupiter-class battle stars, and we're only prepped to crunch manticores right now. The floor crews are changing their build priorities as we speak. There's no use having a half-built battle stars if we can't defend them. Agathon and Kane are all canon. This whole story is canon, uh, which is pretty cool. It's a story of the first Cylon War. It's basically right before... It's right after Galactica vanishes, uh, which I believe was... I don't know... Oh, God, I can't remember which was which on it, but it is completely canon. The whole story is canon, so it's a brand new story designed. It's all before the events of the television show. So Galactica isn't involved in it, but the Jupiter class of battle stars that Battlestar Galactica was a part of, they're available. A lot of other ships are available. So yeah, and you can build stuff, which is kind of neat. So there is this economic strategy layer. At the moment, it looks like we can build Manticore Corvettes. And you can rush him, too, if you happen to have the means okay. to do so. We've got the Manticore hull underway, but let's push its fit out and training schedule forward. Yep, so we can rush it by spending a lot of Tilium to do it. Your brand new Manticore is awaiting your orders, Commander. Which obviously is a little silly, but hey. Uh, this Daedalus right here is a mobile fleet yard, essentially in the first... Cylon War, according to this story, the main fleet yard, I think, on PyCon, it was possibly PyCon, got nuked to shit. So their main fleet production capacity is in a large mobile fleet yard that has a jump drive, which is Daedalus, which is this thing. So we're able to build ships from there and operate using that, and it has its own sort of fighter complement and turrets for defense. All right, uh, you have a, a fleet that you can run. This is the basic colonial fleet right now, and it, it's going to have a certain limit as to what we can have. In this case, we're going to transfer this Manticore Sir, Corvette to its command. The satellite at Caprica Terminal may be the source of the Idris interference affecting our jump distance. I have the briefing packet ready. Sabaganda. So you'll be given these story messages, and I believe there are also some decisions that you can make once you get out of the tutorial about side missions and 
there are Cylon attacks that happen, so there's a bit of a dynamic element to the campaign, research, and even officers, you know, you can train people up and all that kind of thing. So there's a lot of depth here beyond just tactics. It provides access to accurate real-time locations and trajectory data of interstellar objects. The network is vital to our jump calculations. Without Idris, we can't tell if there's going to be a planet-sized inconvenience at the end of an FTL jump. We believe the Cylons are behind the interference of the Idris network and using the civilians at Caprica Terminal as a human shield. Caprica has granted us operational access to the terminal surrounds. Galactica is still MIA, so there will be no Battlestar to save the day if the Cylons do show up. To recap, we have to destroy every Cylon transmitter we find, restore the Idris relay, and jump back to Ragnar, all without causing a single civilian scratch. Just another day at the office, right, Commander? Alright, so I believe we'll probably have a fleet of three Manticore Corvettes to do this, no Battlestar. So we just gotta roll with what we have. Manticores are basic, pretty fast but basic ships. They have guided missiles and they have uh, front and rear turrets. They're not very good otherwise. So far in the game, I think I've encountered the new uh, Nemesis Tech Corvette, which is a hacking Corvette that hacks your shit. And also a a basic light carrier unit, uh, which launched a couple of war diver squadrons, which I swiftly murdered with our vipers. But all right, we're going to jump. It even looks like there's going to be a tactical arm later on the campaign involving managing Tilium to actually fuel your jumps, which is super cool. So you see, we have uh, three ships in the fleet right now Lance of the Perseus and the Thanatos. We're going to jump. Cost Tilium to spool the FTL drives of the fleet group. I'm going to assume it costs more for a larger fleet. And we can't travel too much right now because Idris is broken. And there's a recharge time. So you're going to be operating multiple th fleets as the campaign goes on. Which is exactly what I wanted out of this game, by the way. Like, I want that level of operational complexity. Let's go. Detected a Cylon escort fleet, sir. Looks like we're going to be dealing with them in one way or another. Let's rock and roll. Oh, Galactica was Columbia class, not Jupiter? Okay, never mind then. I don't know much about that. There are obviously some BSG nerds who know a little more than I do. Okay, let's see. Yeah, so this is Daedalus. This is... You can sort of uh, mess around with your deployment a little bit. Don't lose it. Don't get it blown up. Any uh, Fleet damage, I believe, actually has a permanent cost, so you have to fix that up. Uh, we have three Manticores ready to roll. We'll put them at the front. And yes, this is full uh, six degrees of freedom. Height is a factor in this game. So if you were like, oh, please don't do flat boats, they didn't do flat boats. Looks like missiles ready to go, everything's rock ready to rock and roll, let's deploy. Fleet group is jumping in three, two, one. Sir, Caprica Terminal has been locked down and local forces are en route to our position. Readings indicate there's definitely a bogus transmitter in the area. Civilian lives are of value. Their property is not. Find and destroy any relay hijacked by the Cylons. You heard it, Commander. Go blow up somebody's satellite. There's also a political aspect to the story as well. You see a little news feed at the bottom that's like, oh, you delivered the uh, Battlestar. Too little, too late, blah, blah, blah. Like the, the whole point is the 12 colonies right now. This is before the story of the series where everything gets blown to shit. They're trying to get along on... They're trying to get this mandate for this colonial fleet that's a shared fleet between the 12 colonies, kind of like NATO, I guess. And there's a lot of people that don't like that idea. Caprica has offered us the use of two adamant class frigates. Yeah, and if we actually beat this, we get the research for it. All right. Yeah, so here, here's our mandicores over here. We've got two here, and I think one's the other side. This is their projected place that they're going to go. We need to destroy these satellites as soon as possible. Missiles are probably the best way to do that quickly. And of course, you know, going full speed in the direction of that is probably a good idea. So I'm gonna 
assign two of my ships to go this way. We have these, uh, the adamants. That's the, f there's, looks like there's four satellites that we'll probably need to kill. And there's maybe some of them around here. So I'll assign the adamants to turn and sort of deal with this. There we go. Understood. Probably want Daedalus to launch all vipers. If it's space, it's going to give us access to what the things can do. So I'll order it to launch all viper squadrons. They can be sent out. Viper's probably pretty good at blowing up satellites too, I imagine. And I have that third frigate, uh, sorry, the third corvette, which is there. Sort of angle it in this direction. So there we go. Okay, in terms of launching uh, missiles, I'll launch missiles from this corvette at that satellite. I don't want to waste too many more salvos because I'm probably going to be dealing with Cylons. All right. But when you end the turn, it does the stuff. As you can clearly see. And you can angle it in any way you want. So you can kind of watch it cinematically. There we go. Vipers are now out, so you, we can set the Vipers to go and deal with whatever. As for these guys, I think we've only detected that satellite so far. We probably need to get a bit closer to figure out what's going on. So, I mean, this, this is currently going fine, so we can just end the turn quickly again. There, one of the satellites went up. Looks like there's another one over there. We can maybe deploy the Vipers to head over there, but we actually already have two frigates heading in that direction, so I see no reason. The if we is destroyed. We can leave Helios Alpha, correct? Not quite yet, Admiral. Idris data is still compromised. I've got another candidate for the source of the interference, however. Yeah, getting an X-Wing and Armada divide from it is deliberate, because Starhammer was uh, absolutely something that was based on that. Also, I'm not sure who just said console port. As far as I'm concerned, that's completely inaccurate. This was clearly not supposed to be a console game at all. We should probably launch Vipers. Looks like there's some weird shit going down. And the squadrons of Vipers can be set to defend you. They can be set to attack specific targets. Usually these guys will attack fairly smartly, but if you're like, I don't know what they're going to hit, you can hit focus fire and then just select what you want. And that works totally fine. I'm going to boost up the thrusters on this thing. You have um, energy redistribution, so you can pick attack and defensive postures and you'll see what those do there. I'm going to put all power to thrusters. Uh, that's going to knock everything else down, but it's going to get to my manticore there faster. So if something weird does go down over here, we'll be able to handle it. In the meantime, we have Viper Squadrons out here. They are, are essentially being ordered to defend the Daedalus. And they're sort of smartly doing that. If something jumps in near the Daedalus, we'll have Viper Squadrons ready to assist. I think there was another, possibly another satellite over there. I'm going to bank both of our corvettes in this direction. Something a bit fishy's going on. The more you turn them, by the way, the less effective they end up being. Like, they lose... If you turn them too fast, they'll lose accuracy and all that kind of thing. Incoming shit. We don't know what it is yet, obviously. Terminal broadcast isn't expecting any arrivals, so we have to assume the jumpers are hostile. Alright. Here they are. So we need to quickly take that satellite out. It looks like just a, a volley of missiles will do the trick just fine. So if I fire a guided missile volley at that satellite and then turn to meet them. Alright, so we have multiple indicators over there. Is there anything near the Daedalus? Well, if we hit the mini-map and check the Dreadus, we can see there's nothing behind the Daedalus, so I think I might be safe to send the Viper Squadrons out to engage the unidentified targets and defend the space station. Understood. The Adamant's Vipers can probably head there too. They'll get there quicker. 
they'll also get an idea of what the hell that stuff is. We can recon it because we don't know what it is yet. In the meantime, we'll turn and burn with that. And the, our two Corvettes can get, since we're completely outnumbered before our reinforcements get here, I'm going to move to engage, but I'm going to set them to a defensive posture and we'll use some missile volleys at longer ranges. Brace for impact. Because we're probably going to get hit by a lot of nasty stuff that we're not capable of dealing with just yet. But missile volleys are available, so we will shoot. And it's best to shoot before, because if those are tech corvettes and they hack us, we are in a very bad situation. They have one turn before their missiles are ready, but these guys have a uh, missile volley ready, so we're going to target the lead unidentified ship. Oh, we can't get a target lock on it. These are probably electronic warfare ships then. You know what? I'm actually going to slow down and not get too close to them until we can get an idea of what they are. There we go. And there's the missiles. The adamant should take the satellite out very quickly. And then we can bring the adamants around. Interference is still in place, and it seems to be getting stronger. Commander, I have identified two more satellites showing potential interference. Honestly, the Vipers are probably the best thing to deal with these right now because of their speed. So if we can detach one Viper squadron to go and kill that satellite, since it's close... The UI is not ideal, I will say that. Um, you can still click. But it's fine. Once you learn it, it's about 20 minutes and you'll kind of get the hang of it. And I'm going to send the other Viper Squadron full speed to try and kill that satellite. And hope that whatever that is doesn't have a lot of point defense. There you go. So you can scroll through it like that or you can just click. We do need to get these frigates turned around. We're going to put power to thrusters. And get them to turn as quickly as they can. Because they're slow. I'll sort of have them split. Oh god, they're slow. Yeah, it's going to be a nightmare to turn these things. Just as extreme a turn as we can get. Just, uh, that's the best I can do for the time being. We can still launch missiles and stuff behind us, but we can't get a lock on the damn things yet. Okay, so these are two Nemesis Tech Corvettes. They're new Cylon ships, which obviously now cannon. They're very good at hacking and electronic warfare, but they are made of paper. So if we do focus fire on them with everything we've got, especially if we send a lot of missiles their way, then this might work fine. So we'll target the lead Corvette with two missile volleys. And I think, since we now know what they are, we're going to go full attack. Everything we have. Focus fire on the lead Corvette only. To try and kill it as fast as possible. Because right now, the best way to deal with the hacking is to blow the ship up before you get hacked. Because we don't have any countermeasures, really. Alright. They're at maximum attack. We're launching literally everything we've got. Uh... These two Viper Squadrons can now actually head straight in. I would kind of like them to be around there. At the moment that... Defending the Daedalus is fine, but there's nothing there right now, so... We can send them in that direction to, to back us up. Alright, here we go. In the meantime, these guys are going to try and turn. And we'll see what ends up happening here. That beam is them hacking, basically. It looks like they're launching fighters as well. Our Vipers are on the way. They sh Our Vipers are better... Oh god, those are prototype raiders. I haven't seen those before. That's what- and that's what they look like, you know? They're the... They're the old ones. That's gonna be a problem. I don't think- I don't know what the Manticore's point defense is. They've also- they've hacked us, uh, which means some of our systems are not gonna work properly. We can repair something. You can see you've got a, f a firewall 
that's sort of immediately gone to shit because currently our firewalls are really bad. The, the whole hacking thing is something that they just introduced in the storyline. Alright. Like I said, best thing, fire on it. They have weak frontal armor. Take it out immediately. Immediately switch to the other target before we take too much damage. And the adamants are still trying to turn. So they can come in around on that. Which they're doing a really fucking bad job at. <laughs> they're just generally not very fast. On it, Commander. I'm going to turn boost thrusters off and we're gonna get into combat range. And we're gonna see if- can we get a lock from here? Nope. We can hit the satellite, though. Can we turn faster without boosters? I don't know. Uh, you might be right. Worth an experiment, isn't it? If we turn... Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I was actually doing that completely wrong. So, boosters, which makes logical sense, I guess, uh, do mean that you can't turn very quickly. So I'm a dumbass. We can get our guys around much faster than that. There we go. Alright, here we go. I think we have Vipers going out there. Oh, that's a carrier. Okay, first Nemesis is out. If we kill the carrier, I think... I don't know if the Raiders continue to fight. I guess we're about to find out, aren't we? I don't know how good these guys are against that. But we do, if possible, want to try and focus on the second nemesis. Because this hacking is a pain in the dick. So I'm gonna stay on it. Mostly these guys have frontal arc weapons. And I believe we have a missile... No, missile launch capability's not up yet. We'll stay focused. We'll leave the Talon B for the moment. Wherever the Viper squadrons. We do have some. Where are our Vipers? Okay, I'm gonna have them engage the Raiders. And I believe our second squadron of Vipers is there as well. Like I say, UI is a little wonky, could be better, but for a turn-based game it's, it's not hugely important to have massively efficient UI. It would be nice if it was a bit better. Also, don't crash your ship into other ships. For obvious reasons. We're gonna try and go above. Alright, the turn is basically complete now, so if we go full speed, we should be able to get there a lot faster. Not going much use. We don't do that, isn't it? Our vipers really could do with, you know, I don't know, attacking something! Like whatever that unidentified target is. Alright, uh, we have a viper squadron targeting that satellite now, so... Alright, I'm gonna actually follow that. I think you could lock on and follow, a ca follow it with a camera. There is, a, there is some pretty cool camera shit that goes on in this game. I want to make sure we can maybe follow the Vipers and see what they do. Let's go. This might work. Let's see if that works. Sort of did. Uh, I'm pretty sure... There we go. Hostile unit identified. Well, I'm hoping Vipers can blow up a commercial satellite pretty quickly. Pretty fucking weird if they couldn't. All right. Let's uh, go and have a look and see what's going on otherwise. Yes, sir. This is on its way. Do we have missiles? No, not yet. That Viper squad is about to take that satellite out, so that's good. 
These vipers are engaging things, which is also good. They're targeting the raiders. We need that tech corvette dead before it keeps before it hacks anymore. Its rear arm has gone down by the looks of it. We turn this guy around and hit it with everything we have. Missile's not ready yet. The hacking obviously is making it a little less effective. Also, this is a really bad angle to be doing this from. Let's not do that. There we go. Just stay on it. As it turns, we can hopefully destroy its rear armor. Looks like the armory has got hit. So I don't know how much firepower it's still going to have. Sir. Navigation data is still compromised. They must have control of the entire Idris system by now. Not to mention we've destroyed more Caprican infrastructure in the last few minutes than the entire Cylon fleet could on a good day. We've wasted enough time. Commander, remove the Cylon threat from Caprica Terminal before any more lives are put at risk. We're working on it, damn it. Nemesis is almost down. We should have missiles, I think. Yeah, you can do a lot of this UI stuff from here, by the way. Missiles on their way. The armor is almost disabled. We need to do something about that. This talon is a problem. That satellite should be gone now, surely. Yeah, now let's just kill them. All right, well, we'll have our Vipers engage. Pretty much pour it on there and get them on onto the Raiders. Let's watch them fight, because that would be cool. But in the meantime, make sure the Adamants are actually doing something useful. They've been cat about the fight the whole time, because I moved them way too far away. And I have them just burn and get under it. Understood. All right, let's follow that Viper Squadron and see it. Like, I want to see a dogfight. This one, right? Yeah. Manticore is taking damage. Good shit. That looks awesome. It'll be, it's going to be fun to watch this battle afterwards in the full real-time replay with their cinematic camera angles. That nemesis has got to fucking go down. The missiles should finish it off. Um, so it should be okay. Mandacore's rear armor just collapsed, probably from the fire from the Talons. I'm a bit worried about that. If we just keep going forward as fast as possible, we might be able to get out of Mandacore range. And our Vipers are starting to take out their, uh, their ships as quickly as possible. Speaking of Mandacore, let's uh, do a turn and fire missiles. There we go. Manticore is taking damage. Yeah, the Perseus is taking a fucking beating. Let's see if we can repair. Fire control's basically gone to hell. We need that back up. Outside, I'm thinking we go full speed ahead to try and get out of range. I'm not sure if it's the... Uh... Alternatively, we can try and turn and take some of the hits on the, the front... All the rest of the armor's fine. It's literally the rear. So if we can turn and maybe take some hits on the side instead. And switch out to defensive posture. We'll have a better... Uh, we'll have some better luck. I think the... Cor yeah, the Corvette went up in smoke. So the only thing we have left to deal with is the two Talons. So we'll bring that around. Focus fire on the Talons directly in front. And all of these Vipers should be in play right now. As you can pretty clearly see. 
This looks awesome. I'm sorry, like, it's a really awesome looking, very Battlestar-like combat game. The stuff looks exactly how you'd expect it to. All right, we're right on top of the bastard. Let's hammer it. Front armor is taking a beating, but their rear armor is going down, so... Our adamants, our adamants had never been involved in this whole thing because of all of this. They're all so... This one might finally get into firing range. But only if we keep the boosters on. You know, actually, that might be good enough. You can see the range. It's not up to par. Let's launch a missile salvo. And we might be able to hit with missiles from here, too. Now that we finally screwed up the electronic warfare. As for the Perseus, it looks like as we managed to turn, we've got the heat off the rear armor. Yeah, the towns are taking a beating now. Should hopefully go down shortly. Oh yeah, the type variation is full full 3D. And it matters too, because they have bottom and top armor. So you absolutely have to do those things. Yeah, that town's about to go down. And I think the other one's probably dead by now. And the adamant finally arrives to the goddamn party. Congratulations. Maybe do something. So say we all. Like kill the other talon. There we go. Adamant is taking damage. I think the other uh, town's still not dead, but it will be this turn. Turn the Adamant boosters on and go full offensive on everything. There we go. And then hammer the bastard. What was that? I think they're actually mostly broadside guns. Yeah, they are. So I'm not obviously getting a lot of hits. Keep forgetting the manticores are front firing, whereas these guys are broadsides. So let's get them turned so they can get their broadsides out. There we go. There we go, we've got full broadsides on it now. He's screwed. He's getting hammered. That's a good one. There we go. Admiral Kane, Capricorn and Corm representatives are on the line. They want to know about Colonial Fleet's involvement at Caprica Terminal. Divert the calls to my office, Lieutenant. And get us out of Helios Alpha, Commander, before I am forced to ground the Daedalus for good. All right. So we can watch a replay of that whole thing in real time, which is awesome. Uh, very cinematic. So let's do just that. can change the perspective, I'm just not going to. Because I think the auto-direct does a better job than I could. explanation of why there was a hole in the side of that ship. God, this is way better than I even expected. I remember, um, Empire War used to do this. This has done it so much better. 
It actually feels good, like for AI controlled. You'd expect it to be way worse than this, but it actually looks really, really good just for the auto control. This is basically safe for Twitch porn. Oh, and if you think this is cool, you haven't seen an actual battle star. They have a flak system. And you can choose which side you do flak. The flak looks amazing. That's not flak. What you just saw, that's... No, no, no. That's just turrets. Flak? Oh, yeah. It's pretty great. Yeah, that is awesome. That is a amazing feature. And it works really well. When you fire, there's a sound, but explosion, no sound. Yeah, it makes sense, because you hear the firing from inside your ship. When something explodes in space, you're not hearing it from inside the exploding ship because the ship's exploded, ergo there's no sound. That makes perfect sense. That's exactly how it works. All right. Yeah, that's pretty great. <laughs> no doubt. Commander, before we go venturing into the cold unknown, might I suggest we update our fleet a little? Indeed. We just got the blueprints for that adamant frigate. I can draw up all the plans you want, but you will still need the cooperation of the colonies to turn raw materials and blueprints into a living, breathing crew aboard an operational ship. Luckily for you, Lucinda Kane is persuasive. Her recent display of force has provided us the requisitioning power needed for my adamant class frigates. We may as well be well defended, whatever it is you're dragging us into. Indeed. There we go, so we have the requisition points. Compact light carrier, so it has a squadron of vipers, guided missile tubes, and some broadsides. Doesn't have flak, but it's pretty good nonetheless. Well, let's build one. It can be our little flagship for the time being. Yeah, we don't, can't rush it, but we can get it out. Hell, I can build two. Put them in the queue. And then we sort of get to talk about, uh, and sort out how that happens because we know there's already Cylon fleets here. It's like, what do we do about that? Well, we could send the Daedalus fleet to engage one of theirs. Currently, we don't have any... The officer system hasn't activated yet. So since we're already here, we should probably be hitting one of these fleets. And it looks like if they could take control and blockade these worlds, then that's a problem. Uh, that's an uninhabited world. I think we're going to hit that if we can, assuming this works the way I think it does. I'm going to jump the fleet into hopefully dealing with this uh, threat to Helios. Assuming that's what it lets us do, which it may not. That takes us there. The threat is at 
Torin. So that's where I'm gonna jump. Assuming this works the way I think it does. And eventually we'll have enough for multiple fleets, etc. Colonial fleet is now engaging a silent escort group. So you have these skirmish battles that are non-storyline, but they're important for your economy. And if the Daedalus is there, it looks like you don't have to pay supply line cost for deploying this stuff. Whereas otherwise you would have to. Fleet group is jumping in three, two, one. Let's go find the bastards. Launch all the Vipe squadrons. They'll probably be dead ahead since it's just a skirmish and not a story mission. I imagine there's not going to be any clever ambushing. So I'm going to set the Vipers to defend the Manticores against whatever fighter squadron they try and send our way. have a target. They're coming in from the flank. All right. So say we all. All right, we'll have a target on Nemesis. Missile Let's just obliterate prep. it. Missile tubes prepped. I'm not going to send Vipers in, just because I don't know what's there, and I'd rather leave defences unless they, if they send Raiders our way. But I will happily send three Missile Salvos straight at that Tech Corvette. Okay, third Nemesis. It looks like no carriers, so we can safely send Vipers directly at them. That ship is probably dead from all those missiles so we're going to retask we should be getting within firing range momentarily you can hotkey with this i'm not sure i don't you can't sort of group things by the looks of it but you can hotkey so we'll focus fire on the second ship And we'll crank up a little bit of our attack capabilities. And I'm pretty confident that Missile Vol is going to do some significant damage. That's a lot of incoming shit! Missiles incoming! Daedalus is taking a fucking pounding from that. And I don't believe we have flacked on the on that to deal with it. The right armor just went down. Uh, we'll set defenses and get repairs. The hangars got destroyed. So our squadron evade has taken a lot of damage as a result. We need to get that back online immediately. The Nemesis is probably going to blow up from that last volley. The rear armor's down. We're going to stay on them. Yeah, you notice, by the way, the missiles actually hit what looks like the hammer, the hangar as well. Alright, one just went up. That one actually survived, which is a bit of a surprise. They're currently sort of outmaneuvering us. They're not going to let that happen. 
firewall's almost gone on that ship, so it'll be hacked in a minute if it's not careful. I'm gonna send the Vipers to chase that one that almost died. I'm not letting it get away. And that's probably the most effective way to get at it without missiles. That one should probably go down from turret fire. What the fuck was that? I don't know what that was. There was an explosion. Hmm. Almost looks like that was a... Uh, I think it was just parts of the ship going up. I was like, did they just blow up one of our corvettes? And also, how? Oh, they blew up the armory on that ship. That's what it was. Yeah, they through the hacking, they fucked up the armory. So I think that was it. All right. Viper squadrons are on target by the looks of it. They should do exactly what they've been told to do. And finish that one off. Or, you know, not. Not really sure why they didn't f Oh, it's because that's the target. Alright. This thing should be dead next turn. I'm gonna turn them to engage the other targets. Do we have any more missiles? I think we have missiles back up again now. So we can target that with the missile volley. Manticore, down. We lost the f we actually oh my god did I just crash a mandacore into another mandacore? Fuck. Um I think I just blew up two of my ships by ramming them into each other. Oops. That's really bad. Ah, uh, that's terrible. Whoops. Oh, you can do it. Yeah, it's full three-dimensional space. That's... Oops. Can we watch that replay and find out what the fuck happened? Yep, they crashed into each other. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oops. Ah, uh, can I... Uh, can I, can I, it won't let me restart the mission. I think I've got to eat the fact that I just lost two ships. Uh, we actually might now lose the battle. Well, we still have the Vipers up. That should be enough, but holy fuck. You can't save scum. I, I, it's already happened. I don't think you can get back from that. Oh my God, I'm the worst. Okay, well, sorry. Oh my god. That's the worst. That's a thousand Tilliums worth of ships. Well, we're just gonna have to deal with that fact. I may have just made the campaign unwinnable as a direct result of that, but you know what? If you make mistakes, you eat them. That's the whole point. Otherwise, why make mistakes at all? No, wait, you shouldn't do that in the first place, but you know. Yes, Commander. People whining and chat about, oh, you get your restart. No, no, no. That's like saves coming every time you lose somebody in uh, XCOM. That's not the way to play it. My solar ship's getting hacked really badly. I really hope they kill that thing for quickly. Yeah, it's down. Is this game actually good? If I... Why would I still be playing it if it wasn't? Um, that's terrible. Oops. Let's see what happens. Because I just lost all of those ships. I mean, I lost them. Simple as that. There is nothing else to say. My fleet is now down to one ship. Which may again make the campaign unwinnable as a result, but it is what it is. Gotta stick with it. I have other ships being built. We will see what happens. 
I have a mobile shipyard, I can build more stuff. And I will. Once I have the Tillium for it, anyway. And we did just liberate this, which will hopefully help a little bit. Cylon so. Escort Group has been detected. Can't believe I just destroyed two of my three ships by ramming them into each other. Uh, it's cool you can do that, though. We can rush both of our adamants into service now. We have the money. So we can just replace those mandicores with adamants. Which will do just fine. Transfer them to Fleet Daedalus. And that's now 2,000 point fleet, so... We can now engage pretty much whatever we want with that. Problem is, I don't think we have the Tillium to actually jump. No, we do. Oh, we jump recharges 40 Tillium, I think. Without accurate data from Idris, we're stuck relying on these old onboard computers to calculate our FTL jumps. Luckily, I think I've found us an out. There's an Ooh, abandoned torpedoes, colony neat. halfway between Alpha and Gamma that isn't registering much activity. It should be a relatively safe jump. As long as we're careful with our data, we can take the data list from there to Gamma and back home to Ragnar, hopefully without collecting any moons along the way. So I'm going to assume that one of you clipped the me crashing one ship into another. If you have a good clip of that, please post it in the chat and the best clip I'll put on Twitter, because that's funny. Okay. Let's see if we even have enough Tilium to do anything. Looks like we do. We're gonna do the mission, because I want torpedoes. Yeah, we have just enough Tilium to get there. Crew leveling, there is. There's an officer system, but it hasn't kicked in in the storyline yet, so we don't have access to it. Ah, so you can jump around. It's basically if you recharge normally, you don't pay. But if you jump around all over the place multiple times to deal with threats, you have to pay. That makes sense. Yeah, I was going to say, someone clipped it. If you didn't, you're crap. <laughs> Be better subs, damn it. You're unreliable. Unacceptable. All right. Well, shall we have our new frigates in action? That means we have a lot of Vipers where we previously did not, so that should help us. Maybe move the shipyard back. And we still have our one remaining Manticore that we didn't break. Fleet group is jumping in three, two, one. Yeah, because you can go to the vault to clip it. That's how it works. If you don't want me to call the subs crap, then don't be crap. Records show there hasn't been yeah, adults, you can deal with a little bit of ribbing. And if you can't, go away. Unsub. Alright, here we go. Blast us away home, Commander. Oh, we'll be blasting, alright. We have the firepower. Let's not crash our new frigates into each other. Launch all vipers. We're going to just go straight ahead for the moment. It's a mobile shipyard. It has a jump drive. Squadron target is confirmed. Squadron target is confirmed. I'm going to... Keep these guys on defensive posture and send the other two squadrons forward to engage and find out what the hell it is we're fighting. 
I'm going to assume we can't get missile lock at this range with interference. Let's keep going. Yep, those look like fighters, all right. I'm going to put the manticore on offensive posture and push it forward. Yes, sir. To try and shoot at the fighters. It should be relatively good at that. We're going to slowly start to arc the adamants around so they can bring broadsides. That's dangerously close. Maybe go under it. There we go. It, Maybe remember that you can do that. Speaking of, go above it. Thank you. Yeah, the smaller dots are most likely fighters, considering the speed. We have... Vipers moving to intercept, and I'm going to set the Viper squadrons to target each fighter group. And my other fighter groups are running defense. Which may mean they can... I'm not sure if they can shoot down missiles. They might be able to. Alright, here we go. Someone got a clip out, apparently. I'll check the clip after the mission and see if it's good. There we go. We're slowly turning. You can see my Manticore can fire on the uh, Raiders. So they're not, it's not great at it. But it's better than nothing. And our Vipers should engage defensively. Let's see, can we get a lock? Nope. Not yet. But we are setting up the broadsides as soon as we're in range. Here we go. It's like missile contact, possibly. Yeah, there we go. They've- they just walked right into a full turret broadside from that frigate. Oh shit. Commander, multiple new Dreadus contacts. It appears someone really doesn't want us leaving Helios Alpha. Talons. Okay, they should go down pretty fast, hopefully. Missiles on their way. We'll launch missiles immediately. Take it out. Missiles on their way. And have both frigates focus full broadside. Considering we have new contacts, I'm going to crank up offensive to maximum. I want to kill these things quick. Stay under it. I'm going to go, and I'll go dead on with the Manticore. It can also launch a volley of guided missiles and focus fire on the Talon. There we go. That should do the trick. Hostile unit identified. Looks like we just destroy. Yeah, we. Oh wow, those are new. Whatever that I just ate, those are new. I haven't seen those before. It didn't seem to do a lot of damage. I think our vipers may have shot some of them down, but I clearly saw some impacts there. Adamant still seems to be fine. Or whatever the fuck that is, we need to find out. Now that those raiders are mostly obliterated, I'm gonna send a Viper Squadron to find out what the hell that is. Looks like that was the Talon going up in smoke. We'll get on top of the other one quickly. I'm prepared to engage whatever the fuck that thing is. They could be EMP, uh, but I don't see any um, system damage. Systems are fine, so if they are EMP, that is pretty shitty EMP. So say we all. So we, as far as I'm concerned, we ate the full volley. Unless the Vipers ate the volley instead. Oh, did it, uh, half the rear armor went out? I didn't notice that. Okay, so they, it did do, oh yeah, there's the rear armor. It, it took the full brunt of it. Okay, well I'll bring it round to make sure the next volley, hopefully it's the side. Uh, it's a, that's still a nem- oh, so Nemesis do have missile launchers, we just haven't seen them use them yet. Okay, so we ate a volley of them. That's fine. 
I think we probably have the range to say fuck it up at this point. Focus fire on the nemesis. Bring it around a little bit so we have better guns on it. Talon, those vipers, and that manticore should be enough, I think, to deal with it. Yep, target lock is clear. We got full focus fire. Slow down just a little bit. Get under it. Nemesis is only carry a single volley. Oh, that makes sense. They are mostly hacking corvettes. There we go. We've got full broadside on him now. That's not going to last very long. Not against that kind of fire. And it went up immediately. We even got an achievement for that. I think that was probably like see and kill something in one turn. Interestingly, the Daedalus shipyards took some damage from something. Oh, there's a Nemesis Tech Corvette fucking with it. All right. Well. Full offensive. With all of our turrets and bring it down then. To be fair, I don't actually know how many turrets this thing has. Not that many. What's the subsystems looking like? They fuck they fucked up the hangers again. They did that on purpose. Which is kind of neat. Like it's lowering squadron evasion as a result of them damaging the hangers. But this thing does have turrets, just they're not very good. As you can see, yeah, you know, they've got full medium turrets that cover all sides. The problem is that they can't aim at more than what they can. Actually, the bastard moved into our blind spot. I think, if you see where the shipyard is, it, we have firing arcs everywhere except here. So I actually think that that thing deliberately moved into our blind spot, which makes it a super dick. But in the meantime, I guess in that case, the best option would actually be to bring the uh, adamant vipers in. And if we have another volley of missiles, which we do in one turn, deal with it that way. If you haven't already guessed, by the way, I'm really enjoying this. This is totally my game. And it's- the production values on it are excellent. Slytherin does- you know, usually focuses kind of on gameplay sort of above all, and they maybe don't have the budget, and their studios don't have the budget or experience to make high, really good-looking games, but the feel of this, the immersion value of this as a- somebody that likes Battlestar Galactica is absolutely there. I mean, just from those replays at the end, the replays are so good. And that's just such a, a thing that's like, oh, well, that's not important. It totally is. Looks like we... Oh, yeah, we can't fire because, as you can see, there's the 3D um, effect in action. We can't fire. We've got to be on... We've got to get our level up. They're actually above our turrets arcs. So if I raise to its same level, we can get on the bastards. The Vipers are hammering it anyway. And another sour of gu yes. guided missiles should put a hole in it, but still. Speaking of guided missiles, let's get them after that other nemesis. I want those damn torpedoes! Torpedoes are always fun in every space game. I have no intention of allowing us to go without torpedoes for any longer. Once we get the arc, I'm gonna f I'll go full thrust at them. I don't think a corvette's gonna do much damage to the shipyards, but even then... Fuck that Corvette. We just blew up its rear armor. The Viper should be able to finish it off now, I hope. Let's crank it up to maximum attack. The Talon barely has anything of its own, so it doesn't really matter that it's just a Corvette on it, but, you know, we just stay behind it and hammer it with turrets. Subsistency fine. I don't think the Corvette's taken any damage. Alright, full thrust. Maximum speed. And if you hadn't already guessed, I love games that let you screw around with meters. Like, um, that let you reassign power. There's so little of that in modern games, awesome. in strategy games, and I love being able to screw with that. It's a good element of fleet strategy and space games. Meter management is a real thing. All right, let's uh, follow them vipers, shall we? Get 
on him. Not quite in range, but we'll get there. The missiles will hopefully chase him down. In the meantime, I'm thinking that Talon, if it's not dead already, is going to be pretty close to it. It's trying to outmaneuver us. It won't be able to. The ship's way more maneuverable than that. There you go. Now we're hammering it. It's down. Finish off what's left. There's the missiles, and the Vipers are almost there too, so I don't think it's going to live very long. Let's just make sure we're not crashing our frigates into each other, eh? We're not. There we go. Wait, they have another missile tube? Where do they get those from? I don't see any missiles. I didn't miss a ship, did I? No, that's the only Dreader's contact. It'll die. That punched its rear, rear armor out completely. Uh, the flight of the Vipers will finish it off now. And then, of course, we can watch the glorious replay. They're not even bothering with it. Turn around and kill it, you twats. I will... Th th there you go. I was going to say, you are maneuverable. I know you are. I've seen the show. Even Mark 1s, you're fine. So finish that bastard off. There you go. Oh, one of the missiles probably hit a Viper. Yeah, that's true. Your friendly fire is a real thing in this game. I'll sleep better when I can see the Ragnar clouds again. I don't think I've had more than four hours of wreck time since Pi gone. Let's watch and see what happened. I want the Daedalus in Helios Gamma before we're attacked again. Yes, Admiral. FTL drives our spooling. Commander, we'll jump on your word. Looks like the Vipers are about to crash into it. <laughs> Those Raiders got super fucked. They got caught in a crossfire, just torn to pieces. I love the warpins. Like the the mid battle warpins look great. Got torn to shreds. Corvette did good. Hugging onto the back of it, making sure that it got eliminated. It doesn't feel like Nexus at all. Nexus was real time. Although Nexus did have some pretty cool similar camera angles in it. I love how it zoomed in that. It's like, yeah, you ate a full missile volley on the uh, shipyard. Maybe don't do that. dead in space at that point. I think we took its engines out. Hard to know. There is system damage in the game. I've seen it, but it's... I've never seen, like, someone lose their engines or anything. Which would be something that I'd be very interested in seeing. Knocking out subsystems deliberately is pretty cool, especially on larger ships, if you can. 
Not that that's, ne that's not really been a Battlestar thing. Especially when you think, oh, a base star, where's its engines? Everywhere. Oh, okay then. That was awesome. That was really, really cool. All right. It's war. We need offensive forces out there actively repelling these Cylon incursions. Commander, small strike groups may suffice for scouting. But to defend the colonies, we require full capital fleet groups led by officers of Colonial Fleet. That we do. Let's recruit some officers. Recruit experienced officers to provide strategic oversight to our fleets. Sir, one of McKenley's officers survived the attack on PyCon. We could recruit them to help aboard Daedalus. Oh, and they have a skill tree. That looks a bit nice. Wonder if you can rename them. Yeah, so they sort of have a basic skill and then they can level up different aspects of themselves. Once an officer has been recruited, they need to be assigned to the fleet group they will oversee. Congratulations on figuring out that I'm not playing XCOM right now. You know what my job is? To look at stuff that's new, not stuff I've already shown you. Alright. Let's assign... Yeah. This officer is experienced enough to be promoted. Hand them their new badge, Commander. Officer can I promote when they have proper experience? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it makes sense. As they become more experienced, officers can choose to focus on fleet wide tactics or bolster the strength of their personal flagship. Yeah, so your flagship can be better, or we can incorporate a lot more fleet points. At the moment, I think the two frigate corvette fleet is fine. So I'm going to boost the flagship up instead. The presence of a colonial fleet officer at a colony will encourage the local government to pay their Tilium stipend. We didn't create the articles just to have them ignored. So this is where we're getting our money from. So this is a little bit XCOM-like, so if they're fucking pissed off, they're not going to pay you. So the more we fortify them and the more we defend them, the more pleased they're going to be. Commander, it is your job to keep the Daedalus well-resourced and the 12 colonies defended. I have other business to attend to. Lieutenant Agathon will brief you when I have further commands. All right. So money-wise... We basically can't really afford anything at the moment, but we will after this turn is done. So we have Cylon group incursions, and that's our next Strike Force mission, but we can easily go and take that on instead. Well, I think you can create, you can have more fleets without officers. You don't need an officer necessarily to to run them, I think. Because I last time I built a ship, it was like, this is Colonial Fleet 7. I'm like, all right then. So if we wanted to build up another maybe fleet of a couple of frigates, we could totally do that. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to put two frigates, frigates in the queue. In the meantime, we can send this in to deal with these wankers. jump. I think that's about all we can do. Yep. Alright, we're going to raid Sagittarian. We should hopefully absolutely crush these bastards with a new commander. Yeah. I wonder what his flagship is then. I mean, if it's the Daedalus, increasing the CIC ability of the Daedalus is not in any way helpful. So I'm hoping it sort of buffs up one of our actual ships instead. I don't know if- I don't recall assigning him to anything. Or it may just be the entire fleet. I don't know what it does. Alright, let's rock and roll. Fleet 
group is jumping in three, two, one. I think an officer just attaches to a fleet and commands it. Yeah, it looks like he is commanding Daedalus, which is not useful because they're CIC, like, they don't really fight much, so... Yeah, that's not really all that helpful. I wish he was on one of the frigates, because he'd actually be useful there. I guess it might help the squadrons a bit. Maybe. Alright, launch vipers. Get these things turned around and head in that direction. So say we all. If it's a fleet wide bonus, then that's good. Well, that makes sense. Don't crash them into each other. Yeah, I, s I sent that one deliberately above the other so that wouldn't happen. Music's really good. I don't think it's Bear McCreary's, but it's a good close second. Alright, let's set them up for broadsides as soon as these bastards get into range. We could send all of our Vipers straight at the lead ship. Understood. There you go. Because whatever it is, I doubt it can deal with four squadrons of Vipers. And once we've got Dreyda's contact on them, we can missile the rest. Based on current trajectory, this should be fine. They should come into range, and we should be able to open up as soon as that happens. So we can send the Manticore in to have a look at what that is and what's going on. Yes, Commander. Hostile unit identified. Ah, three Nemesis? That's nothing. All right. Terran part. Understood. Let's look at... I need to have a quick look at how that benefits us. Because is that actually giving us a range? Yeah, so it actually reduces range defensively. That will increase turret range. So, what... Solutions updated. They're all deliberately, like, moving out of the range, but with what we have, we can aim. And as for the adamants, if we put them on full as well. It's a bit strange. I think that actually indicates, like, maneuverability and not firing arcs. The fact that, like, firing arcs sort of aren't up permanently is a bit weird. These are the firing arcs, but you'd think you'd be able to see those all the time. I don't know why you can't. Bit wonky. Alright, we need to raise up to about where they are, because otherwise we're not going to be able to get our turrets on them. Yes, sir. Let's just be a little careful not to crash those. And then we can open up with everything we've got. These guys just don't have fighter defense, like, they're not gonna stand a chance. At this point, we don't even have to really worry. I don't think they're even gonna get close enough. So say we all. There probably is a hotkey for bringing firing arcs up, I just don't know what it is. Yeah, because they're gonna hack the Manticore, which is a bit of a pain in the dick, but... I'm gonna put the Manticore on defensive and then bombard them and destroy them with uh, the Vipers while the Manticore takes the hacking.
Madikal can't hurt shit as a result of this hacking, but the Vipers aren't affected by it, so... The Vipers will shred what's left of these ships. That is, they're about, I think, to get into firing range. Yeah, they're, they're within turret firing range. They are... fucked. Give them what we got. I don't know what that squadron of vipers is just doing hanging around there. It's like, get in there! I ordered all the squadrons of vipers in there. Um, oh, was that? That was not set to defensive. I do not recall ever asking it to do that. You get in there and kill it with the rest of them. As for Mandicore's hacking, you just do that. Surprised we haven't killed them yet. But considering how close they're getting to the frigates, I have a feeling that's gonna happen sooner rather than later. On it, Commander. And we also have another volley of missiles ready, so. If you're not dead now, you gotta be in a minute. Missile tubes prepped. Our engineering and armory's down, so we can't fire missiles. Fire control's down. Basically, the Manticore is disabled, but that's fine. It doesn't need to be enabled. It was just there as a decoy while the Vipers and the Frigates finish these off. God, the, all the subsystems are offline. Like, they've literally hacked the whole ship. Its navigation's about to go down. We're not even going to be able to maneuver the thing, but it's not really a problem. Because these guys are going to die very, very soon. Well, it seems we've got fire control back up. Because it's still pouring fire into the back of it. Let's get him up to about the same level so we can actually get the fire on it. You can see, like, he deliberately moved up to avoid the broadsides. Well, we're not going to let that happen for too much longer. Does that mean we have missiles online? We do. Hit him. Yeah, you can't evade it now. Finish him off. It's up. This game is really, really good. And that's awesome. Well, when it comes to the silent hacking, they did at least disable those, like... They can only hack parts of the ship. They can't blow it up.
Man, that ended perfectly, music-wise, didn't it? The music is so good! I wonder who, um... I wonder who wrote it. It's... N a, a pr they did not have Ben McCreary on, I'm almost certain. But you could not have... You couldn't have told that, like... It's that good, it's really hard to know. I'll try and figure out who it was. Let's see, Battlestar... I to get Deadlock Composer. I don't know if there's any information. Ooh, no, that, that was from 2009. I don't think there's any info. I don't see any anywhere as to who wrote this. It might be in the credits. It's probably in the credits. I don't think it's anywhere on the Steam page, but whoever it was, they need to be given extreme credit for making something that sounds and feels like the show. Let's see. Yeah, there's, there's no information. Not that I can find. Yeah. Alright, well, I'm gonna dig that information out because I want to know. I'm gonna get the soundtrack out of this damn thing and put it on my playlist. It's that good. I'm really impressed. I'm really, really impressed with this so far. It's a really good fleet tactics game with a solid economic and uh, shipbuilding layer on top of it. We're gonna see what they can do with officer development. Like, it's having that customization is great. Chamber, you can't seem to rename them. I'm told you can rename ships, but I don't know how. Uh, I have the requisition. Sure. Promo to rank three. Why not? So I can put 10% XP gain on it. Get his... Like I said, this this fleet right now, anyway, seems to be doing fine. I'm sure at some point it will not. But I'm going to uh, go with XP gain. They could have done with maybe, like, the, the 12 colony flags are a bit... Eh. They could have probably done with maybe doing a bit more work on that. Otherwise, this interface looks good. For the most part, if a little basic. The soundtrack is comprised by Ash Gibson Gregg, who has a background mostly in TV and theater music. Uh, good fucking on him, because, oh my god. What a soundtrack. Uh, let's see if I can track this guy down. I want to know what he's done. Uh, Ash Gibson Gregg. That, we had to go into the AMA for that information. Uh, which is kind of ridiculous. I've uh, Gibson Greg or Grieg. I'm going to assume Grieg. Yeah, so he's an Australian composer by the looks of it. Uh, his website's pretty sh pretty sweet. Um, games wise, he this is his first game. TV, he's uh, he's barely known for anything. Like this, I don't think he's done a single big thing ever, which amazes me. Where's his damn social media? Does he even have one? He doesn't even have a Twitter. I think he's just got a Facebook. Uh, that's a shame. Yeah, I'd love to get in touch and tell him his music's awesome. But it, I don't think he even has a Twitter account. Sensible. <laughs> Good for him. Uh, if I could avoid it, I would too. But, um, he is really, really good. Oh, listen, IMDb. It's it's obscure. It's completely obscure. Blows my mind. Uh, I'm going to have a quick look at that clip manager because I want to post that clip on Twitter of me crashing the two Corvettes into each other. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, quite a few. The problem is, you get I get hundreds of clips a stream, um, and I don't know which ones are which because they're often called like they're not called anything. Most people don't name their clips, which makes it a lot harder to figure out. Uh, it's probably this one, yeah, because this this one has two hundred three views. So it's like this is the one of me crashing the ships into each other, isn't it? On the replay. Did you get the replay in it? Tell me you got the replay in it. Look, if you didn't get the replay bit in the clip, then you failed. I think you failed. Uh, I'm watching the clip right now. Mm. 
any professional clip makers. Looks like, is that me ramming them into each other? Just checking the clip now. No? No, I don't think it di it didn't show the replay. That's not good enough. The re the replay. No, this. Is... Yeah, that that actual thing looks bad. It looks it looks like they didn't even crash into each other. Okay, uh, yeah, not good. If anyone has a clip that actually does show them crashing into each other on the replay, then by all means post that. Uh, if you don't have the replay, and I'm not posting it because the replay looked cool and that didn't. Sorry. But yeah, this is kind of great. I am very much a fan. Now, also, did we get the blueprint for torpedoes? We did. So we can buy these munitions. I don't know how you pay requisition for them. I don't know exactly what you do with them or how you equip them, but I want them. Give me torpedoes. I bought some torpedoes. You can put equipped to a unit with a munition slot. I don't know if frigates have those. I'm going to have to do this clip myself, aren't I? That's fine. I can do it of the VOD. That's easy enough. We'll see if we can do it that way. We've got a bunch of Tilium. The ships are on the way. I can force a jump to deal with this, I think. If I wanted to. I've dealt with all of the other skirmishes. Cylon forces have been provoking the military here. No civilians are present, so maximum force is encouraged. Yeah, we'll spend the extra Tilium to engage the next story mission, I think. I don't see why not. It's costly, but probably worth it to stay on top of that stuff. I'll be interested to see if anything does have a munition slot to equip those torpedoes. Let's find out. Yeah, so I think these are the munitions. We'll see maybe if we could swap out. Hey, if we could put torpedoes on that Corvette, we could get right behind them and hit them with that. We can. Torpedoes, they're faster. They fire a salvo of 10. Yeah, so if we can get this Corvette behind someone and hit them with a huge torpedo salvo, that would be pretty sick. And then we can keep the frigates at standoff range. I like it. Ooh, we could have raptors too? The game never even told me about that. So instead of vipers, we could launch raptors, which can dock with targets. I imagine there's probably a mission where you do that. And they do also have... They can apparently boost firewalls. Uh, oh, you can dock them to friendly units to bolster their firewalls. That's cool. And they do have rocket racks. For the moment, I'm going to stick with vipers. It's neat that you can change that, though. I like that. You can't... Uh, you can, oh, you can even... Uh, in squadron slot 2, I could actually get a squadron of raptors. You know, let's roll a squadron of raptors. Ah, that makes it cost money. Now nah, let's do it. We want to see what they're like. I think it says uh, Daedalus' presence, so it doesn't matter. Let's equip a squadron of raptors to the Daedalus. We already have three squadrons of vipers anyway. I don't care if raptors are all useful late game. I want to see what happens. And um, we are going to use torpedoes on the manticore and see how that, ha see how that works out. I'm going to reposition... My ship's just a little bit, because we know what happened last time. They came in from the flank. Story mission, so they're probably going to be multiple waves. So I can roll. Yes, indeed. Backseat gaming isn't appreciated. In three, two, Especially when it's anti-fun. Dreadus contacts. All marks are hostile. That's more than I expected. He is hoping that I equipped enough to deal with it. Bring him around. Yes, sir.
Doing suboptimal shit for a stream is fun. Just remember that. We're here to showcase and we're here to learn. And that means suboptimal play sometimes. Oh, yeah, it's like, you're gonna crash into each other. So it does give you a warning. Thunder. We want to get the manticore under position where we can unleash uh, leash t uh, t t t yeah, Try again. Fucking hell, that's bad. Unleash a torpedo salvo. Launch vipers and raptors. Vipers are on the way. Vipers launch. Vipers launch. You can hotkey those. And raptors. And we'll see what raptors do. They do have missile racks. They may be useful. I guess we're going to find out. That's a lot of incoming on the Daedalus. I don't know if the Daedalus can take that. Oh, best we're about to find out, aren't we? It's not like this. This thing doesn't really have a lot of offensive or defensive capabilities. I wonder if posture affects the hangar. It actually doesn't. So you can go full defensive posture and the hangar is totally fine. This will also increase our Dreadus range, which actually is a good thing, because we don't know what those are. That's what that is. It's a fucking Dreadus range. Right. Oh, that's useful then. All right, let's rock and roll. No, they're not going to crash into each other. We already thought about this. One's going under the other. Okay, we have Raptors. So if we select the lead ship as a target, actually, if we have the raptors maybe come in from the flank and hit hit the side. In the meantime, we don't actually know what's coming at us, so having the vipers stay in defensive positions is probably the best bet. I'm going to have them on the manticore, so because the manticore is a bit faster, so we can get the vipers to the front a little quicker and have them provide a screen at the front for whatever is coming our way. And as for the Manticore, well, it's going to have to deal with whatever this is Understood. and then see if we can get a good salvo of torpedoes. We'll probably get pretty close to hit them. So say we all. All right. Frigate's looking good. Let's go. IFF confirms unit is hostile. Nemesis, that Talon looks like a primary torpedo target. Let's get right under these things. So how do torpedoes work? I guess you just fire them straight ahead. That thing probably is not prepared to deal with a massive torpedo salvo from here. We should probably just uh, fire and see what happens. It's going straight ahead. It'll probably just eat them. In the meantime, the frigates can get straight on those tech corvettes. There's quite a lot of them, which makes me worried about going full offensive because it'll reduce our firewall strength, but we can give it a shot. missiles to hit the lead ships. The fighter screens will work when the Talons launch, so... As for these Raptors... We're supposed to be heading in that direction. Whatever that is. Let's go. That's the torpedoes. They're fast. And they all missed every last fucking one of them. I guess we need to get a bit closer next time. Well, the nemesis are trying to hack, so blow it up with everything we have. And as for the vipers, they're pretty much in the mix, I think. Missiles incoming! The Vipers, as you can see, can try and deflect missiles. They're just not very good at it.
Rear armor is not quite down, it held. Talon's right in the mix now. I'm gonna do a quick turn and get right on the back of that yes, Talon. Raptors are now targeting that nemesis. I'm gonna put rockets right into the back of it. Let's see what they can do. Some damage, but not a great amount. As mentioned, probably better... I mean, they almost punched through the rear armor, but better for defense. I'm gonna have the Raptors dock now with the Adamant, and they can boost its firewalls. The Vipers are in the mix. We haven't actually killed any targets yet, which is a little concerning. We should have torpedoes shortly. Let's get right behind it, and then we won't miss. Understood. One tech corvette up. I'm going to assume the, uh... Oh, the right armor has not failed, but the rear armor has. So if we actually do a more extreme turn, we could get this hitting the right armor instead of the back. And missiles are ready. Now's the time to rip them apart. One missile salvo will probably take that out. This is the one I want dead. And the Manticore is, I think, ready to fire its torpedo volley, hopefully right into the back of the Talon this time. Let's see if it actually hits it. Here we go. Adamant is taking damage. How do we hit him this time? Oh, and it was good. So basically, make sure it's right in front of you. took severe damage. Need our armory and everything back online. The raptors did dock, right? Yes, they did. So they're providing support, which is good because everything is broken. We have to kill the tech corvettes before they hack us to pieces, basically. In this case, quite literally. I may have to uh, yank up the defense. If I do that, I'll be able to repair quicker. It's like, hey, Vipers, if you're not killing everything yet, you should be. So, you know, do. That Talon's almost gone. I think we're spreading firepower a bit too thinly. That's what we got to do with it. is basically can't fire at this point. Its fire control is broken. So we have to knock out the nemesis that's stopping it from firing. Uh, did the talent go up? It hasn't. I'm going to focus fire on that... what's left of that tech corvette. Because it's so beaten up it should explode any moment. Engineering still up. Last thing we'll lose is navigation. Fire control is completely broken. We actually need that more up than anything else. 
because we don't have guns. Just kill them. <laughs> At least that frigate's still up. Alright. Tech cover to down. If we could just get those other two out. We have some fire control back up. Our firewall is basically almost gone. Our missiles are offline. Everything's offline. If we can just line up for a cheeky little shot. Would that ram it directly? I, don't, I think it's going forward. I think we shouldn't. If we can just get right behind it and just unload at point blank. They're on the Talon, they're on the Nemesis, they're on the Nemesis. Adamant is taking damage. That missile is gonna hurt. We can't defend against it. It held. It's a tough bastard, I'll give it that. Fire control's down again. We have the tech bay online, whatever the fuck that does. Everything else is shut down. Guided missiles are offline, but these guys aren't. And as for you... Oh, look, we're right behind... Well, we were. We can hit the Talon again with torpedoes, and we're going to. Eat it. Just eat it. Looks like another tech corvette just went up. I think that's everything. I think that's all the hacking capabilities. Their other nemesis is out of range. We can finally fix our shit. And that talent's getting ripped apart, so... Not too worried. It's like, oh, you're coming after us. All right. We don't have much of a turret system, but whatever we've got, I guess we'll use on it. Once we have fire control back on this, we can fire our rockets. Adamant is taking damage. Yeah, there should be some pretty good replay on this, especially with those torpedo volleys. It should look good. I'm going to wrap up after this fight. This is not a hard recommendation for people that are into Battlestar, though. It's a $40 price tag, so... For people who are not, it might be a bit of a harder sell. Because they're not so much into it thematically. For people that are, this is a no-brainer. I think... Full speed ahead. We'll probably need the Vipers over here to get them. The Talon should... It survived a lot, I'll give it that. But we need to send, spend yes, yeah, the sir. rest of the Vipers on that Nemesis because it's too far out of range otherwise. Attack with everything yes, we got. Adamant has been taken down for a while. Apparently, if the towns are at point blank, they can unload quite a lot. Oh, well, we've got one volley of torpedoes left. Fire control is still down. Everything is broken. Rear armor is destroyed. I think I'm gonna gonna turn it. I don't even know if I have navigation left. I don't think I can. Yeah, my navigation is also down. It's literally dead in space. 
The tech corvette just got obliterated, though. I think it... Oh, no. Yeah, it did. Yeah, I guess it got into range of the shipyard's guns, and that was it. Turn the thrusters off. Turn it around. And focus fire. Adamant is taking damage. Yeah, so if you let those things get close, they do some damage, but otherwise... There we go. All contacts down. Very cool. That went pretty well, all things considered. Yep, somehow we completely missed with that volley. But when they actually hit, those do excellent damage. And they're much faster than guided missiles, too. That's the one that just we couldn't hit anymore with that adamant because it got hacked too much, so its whole fire control system got wrecked. One on the other hand was doing just fine. And that's when the torpedo volley actually hit. cool, isn't it? This is all in-game. This is all in-game music, and none of it's done by Bear McCreary. It's literally done by a not very well-known at all Australian composer. There's uh, Alan Greg... Uh, it's Alan Grieg, I believe is his name. It's unfortunately not listed on IMDB or anything. Literally the only way we found it is in AMA. Super cool. Very, very cool. I'm all in on this one, definitely. Ab yes, Ash Gibson Grieg is his name. And his music kicks ass for this thing. Thank you very much for watching, folks. This is Battlestar Galactica Deadlock. It's available right now on Steam for $40, the original equivalent. Pretty kick ass, right? If you're into Battlestar, this is a no-brainer. If you're not, bit of a tricky, trickier sell, certainly. But I really like it. I really like it a lot. As for um, outside of that, I, I don't. It's got a skirmish mode. I don't know what it has sort of beyond that. It has multiplayer. Um, I believe that lets. I I'm told you might be able to play as the Cylons in that. Uh, I guess you know you can see what's going on with that, and there's obviously not many maps, but. You've got some pre-made fleets. Yes, you can play as the Cylons by the looks of it. And you can modify those fleets. So, if I wanted to add ships, these are the ships that are available. Uh, basically, two kinds of Battlestars. Artemis Light Battlestar and Jupiter Heavy Battlestar. Aircraft carriers, long-range missile cruisers, warships, manicores. Yeah, it's not a massive selection, certainly. Uh, outside of that, what the Cylons have. 
you can kind of clearly see there. Uh, the full-on base stars, Cerberus super carriers, all the way the Nemesis tech corvettes and the Talon carrier frigates, and then gunships, assault carriers, and all of the munitions that you can customize with beyond that. So you have a fairly small selection of actual ships, but you can customize those ships with nukes and all sorts of things like that. And Vipers, it looks like Vipers go up to Mark II and there are sweeper defensive crafts as well. So yeah, there's there's a decent amount going on there. Uh, hopefully that also leaves some room for DLC. Slytherin loves DLC, so it's probably coming. I dig it a lot. Thanks for watching, folks. If you haven't watched it already, the podcast is up right now. And if you didn't catch it, I demand you have a look at Rock of Ages too, because it is hilarious. The video is currently up on youtube.com slash cynical brit. As for length of single player, it's hard to say, because there's a bit of a dynamic element to it, so the skirmish is going to keep popping up. But it seems like it seems like there's enough value in here, especially if you get some skirmish play in. What there is, though, is great. As a Battlestar viewer, it catches the theme just right. It, the music, the aesthetic, and the way that the camera work operates is all spot on. I'll see you next time.